We're looking now at a one kilogram block. That one kilogram block is resting on a surface with a coefficient of friction of 0 0.5 and it's being pulled by a 5 Newton force but at an angle of 40 degrees elevation from the horizon. So this block, so imagine my calculator as the block and it's not just being pulled sideways, it is being pulled upward and sideways. So it is being lifted while it's being pulled over. The way we're going to analyze this is we're going to take that force and rewrite it as two components, one that is parallel to the surface and one that's perpendicular from the surface. So if I was to draw a free body diagram of this situation and label all forces, here's the block. It has a mass of one kilogram. It obviously has gravity pulling it down. Because of this force being applied at an angle, it has a force pulling it upward and a force pulling it forward. And they're both just components of this force here. So upward we have the normal force and we have the component of the applied force that is perpendicular and this is going to be 5 times the sine of 40 degrees and we have the component of the applied force which is parallel to the surface this is going to be 5 times the cosine of 40 degrees And because it's being pulled this way, there will be friction pulling back. So our goal here is to find the net force on this block and then determine its acceleration. To start out, I'm going to have to find the normal force. I can then use the normal force in conjunction with the coefficient of friction to determine the force of friction. From there, we'll be able to determine the net force and then in turn acceleration as well. Okay, so let me rewrite this with the numbers in here. So I have a one kilogram block. I have a component which is parallel, which is five times the cosine of 40. So that's 3.83 newtons forward. I don't yet know friction. I've got the force of friction pushing back. I've got my yet unknown normal force. I have a force of gravity which is 9.8 newtons. It's 9.8 times 1, so that's 9.8 newtons. And I've got an upward component of my applied force, and that applied force could be a rope or a cable or just something pulling upward on the object. And that's 5 times the sine of 40. And that's 3.21. Okay. Now, this block is resting on this surface. There's a possibility the block is being lifted into the air. If the vertical component of this applied force is greater than the force of gravity, this block will be lifted into the air. If it is less than the force of gravity, then the block remains on the surface. And what that upward component of the applied force affects is the normal force. It'll reduce the normal force. Imagine it this way. My calculator sits on the desk. There is a normal force pushing up on the calculator, so it's not falling through the desk. If I pull upward on the calculator with a force less than gravity pulls it down, I don't lift it into the air, but I make it slide easier because I'm reducing the normal force. That is essentially the pressure between the calculator and the table. That's what this force is going to do. Okay, so looking here, as the block sits at rest, 
the normal force plus 3.21 balances that force of gravity of 9.8. So Fn plus 3.21 is equal to 9.8, which makes the normal force 9.8 minus 3.21. So our normal force is 6.59. Our force of friction is mu times the normal force. And mu is 0.5, so our force of friction is 0.5 times 6.59. So our force of friction is 3.3. 3. So the upward component of this force that is applied at an angle goes to reducing the normal force and that in turn reduces the force of friction. Just as when you pull upward on something you can slide it easier than if you were to just pull it straight along. So we have a force of friction of 3.3 pulling back. We have an applied force of 3.83 pulling forward. So the net force, now we also have vertical forces, but remember gravity is 9.8 pulling down. The normal force plus the vertical component of the applied force cancel gravity out. So to find the net force, I'm looking at the 3.3 newtons of friction pushing back and the 3.83 newtons pulling forward. Now remember, these 3.8 newtons pulling forward are the horizontal component of the original applied force. So the net force is 3.83 minus 3.3, which is 0.53 newtons. And remember the block has a mass of one kilogram. So our acceleration is the net force divided by the mass. So it's also 0 0.53 and it's meters per second squared. Okay, so to recap, to solve a problem where we have a block and a force is being applied at an angle, we analyze it as if that was two different forces being applied to the block. One which is parallel to the surface, which slides it forward, and one that is perpendicular from the surface, which pulls it upward. We use this to find the normal force because gravity is pulling down, the normal force is pushing up, and this is also pushing up. And these two together counter gravity. So we use this to find our reduced normal force, which we in turn used to find the force of friction. We use the parallel component of our applied force, minus friction, to find the net force sliding the block forward. A couple other variations on this. It could have turned out that the force of friction was greater than our applied force our parallel component of our applied force. If that was the case, the force of friction would naturally reduce itself to simply match that and the block would not accelerate. It would stay still. Another variation would be if our vertical component of our applied force was greater than gravity. If that was the case, the block would be lifted into the air.